Now, this study of like behavioral objectives has roots in the American educational psychology, but there are two other traditions associated with this type of approach that Eisner discusses. One is industry and the other is military training. So here's how these objectives might be used in an automobile plant, like a facility that will kind of manufacture or assemble automobiles. So this is from page 95. Quote, a prototypical form is created for the cars to be assembled. This form is described both physically and mechanically for each model. Subsequently, a component analysis is made of the prototype. A task analysis follows that prescribes the steps to be taken in production and their sequence and production begins. The manager of the assembly line has the task of ensuring that all operations are performed in the order specified. The goal to be achieved is the creation of an isomorphic relationship between the original prototype and each car coming off the line. If these cars do not match, there is a callback, and the problem is identified and readjustments are made. An efficient and effective assembly line produces identical cars day after day that in every aspect match the model that was originally created, end quote. Now that might sound fine until you realize this is talking about children. Then Eisner goes on on page 96 to talk about how this relates to military. Now here's a quote from page 96, quote, when one has a training program, a program that intentionally attempts to help another acquire a known specific performance system to be used to achieve a known goal, the acquisition of known behavioral routines might be appropriate. Personal ingenuity and idiosyncratic behavior are discouraged both on the assembly line and in the boot camp. The armed forces justify such an approach on the basis that it is of paramount importance for soldiers to learn to follow orders. Prediction and control of troops are required in time of war. Industry employs such an approach because it is efficient. More cars can be produced in better fashion when systematic routinized procedures are followed, end quote. Now, when we start thinking of students and the education system as assembly lines and students as a product of that assembly line, I find some problems in that. And we're gonna kind of talk about that some more in this chapter, in this podcast episode.